way to pseudocodes and other way to represent uh, algorithms. And we convert in these uh, flow charts into pseudocodes. So right now, what we did, we discuss how to convert uh, this pseudocode to print numbers from 10 to 1. So you, as you can see, we start and then we'll set number to 10 because we'll start with printing 10. And then within that, we print the number, right? So we will print the number and then We will print the number and we will uh, subtract the variable by one. So in our case, it's number minus zero, right? So we answer, we discuss, we will have number. And then what we did, we are going to look at uh, while the number is greater than one. So that's the condition and we were displaying number and while reducing the number by one. So this will repeat 10 times and this should print numbers from 10 to one. Okay, um, let's look at uh, an, another one, right? So in this one, what we discuss, uh, we discuss how to uh, print the total of the numbers from one to 10, right? So calculating total is important. Uh, th this is another one. So to calculate the total, we discuss one thing. We have to start with a variable total and the other things are similar. So in this one, instead of a number, we have a variable in. Repetition control variable number, but uh, here, we are going to use n, so it n goes from one to 10. And within that, instead of printing the number, we calculate the total. So what we did, each time we add the total, right? Total plus n, total equals total plus n. So that's what we do. And after finishing this one, we are printing total. Okay, right, write down the uh, example, uh, write a pseudocode to print total of numbers from one to 10. You don't have to draw the, Low chart, but can you send me the pseudocode? Let's okay. start. So in this one, what we are going to do, we are going to write for do structure. So when you have a for loop, when you say for, and then we can start with saying begin and end. And then we can say in for. And the difference of for loop is, I will share, in difference of for loop is, in for loop, everything is built in, meaning uh, we will have for, let's say the value is n, we can say, okay, In the value of n, we can define. We can say, for example, uh, n can go from 
1 to 10 and we can say do and simply we can say okay print or we can say display and simply we can say okay display So for loop is similar to while loop, but a while loop, the problem was we have to initialize, we have to have a condition. So in for loop, uh, there's no condition as such. It will iterate. So you can see the code now. Can you see the code? Yeah, I can see. Right? I'm highlighting the keywords here. So in a, uh, the for loop, uh, so it says for n equals one to 10. So it means we have a variable in here and we it says it goes from one to 10 directly. Not like in while loop, while loop we have to state this initial value, increment, and then also condition. So there's no condition here. It just say, okay, it goes from one to 10. So every time when this loop works, it start with one, it display one. Then when you meet n4, it goes to the next value, that is two. So it display two, then again n4, then repeat. Then again, you start from the beginning. So that's how it goes. Okay, let's take down. So in this one, we are going to discuss uh, how to write pseudocode using do while. But to explain this, I will use a while loop. In while loop, we know we will have a variable. In this case, we have taken as a number and we set to one. And every time within the loop, we will print the number, right? So it will print one. Then we will increment the number by one. So it becomes two now. The next time in the iteration number becomes two, it displays two and so on. So the difference is with the do while, okay. So in the beginning, you will have here do, right? So that's what will happen. And instead of in while, we have while load. So that's why we call do while. And this condition will check at the end. There's no change. That's the only change, right? So it goes like this. So what happens this one? So number is one. Then do means the start of the loop. You display one. Then one plus one, it becomes two. So you check whether two is less than or 10. Yes, you go here. You display two, two plus one, this becomes three. You check whether three is less than or equal to 10. Similarly, if you go on like this, you print nine. Nine plus one, this becomes 10. You check whether 10 is less than or equal to 10, it's equal. So you go, you print 10. Then 10 plus one, this becomes 11. And then 11, is it less than 10? No, it will come out. So in this one, we are going to look at repeat until. Now in repeat until it's a loop. Uh, again, the condition will be at the end of the loop with until. So within this one, it repeat when condition become false. So you can see here, we start with number. You display the number, so that will print one. Then number plus one, one plus one, number becomes two. Two, is it greater than 10? No, then it will repeat. You see how it works. Whenever condition become false, it will repeat. Then you print two, two plus one is three. Three, is it greater than 10? No. It will repeat. 
Similarly, it print 10, 10 plus 1, 11, 11 is greater than 10. Yes, then come out. Right? That's how the repeat works. In repeat until loop, it will repeat when the condition become false. Let's take down. But we are going to discuss how to convert pseudocodes to flowcharts. So let's write down the topic. We'll discuss how to convert pseudocodes to flowcharts. So in the exam point of view, usually there will be questions where they will give you a pseudocode and you are supposed to draw flowcharts. Okay. So the first one, so let's start with the first question. In the first one, we'll look at how we could convert a code, right? So in this one, we will start looking at few things. First of all, um, let me start with a small already available code. And let me change this. So let's say we have a begin and let's say we have a read and let's say we have a C, which means you are reading a value for C, right? And then once you do that, let me increase the size. And then let's change the values. So let me put the uh, saying that, okay, uh, if, let me change the colors to black. Yes, if equals nine, in, nine into C. Again, let me say if, Again, we will say f equals f divided by five, All right? The next one, let's say f equals f plus 32. And then I'm going to say, okay, let's uh, display f. And then we are going to say in. So simply we'll get C and then we'll multiply C with nine assigned to F, then F equals F divided by five, then F equals F plus 32. Finally, uh, let's say display F. Right. So can you draw the flowchart for this? Let's start. 